and welcome to New Day Federal Way. I'm Kathy Arndt. On April 2nd, 2014, Mayor Farrell delivered his first State of the City address to a packed room right here at the Twin Lakes Golf and Country Club. During the event hosted by the Federal Way Chamber of Commerce, Mayor Farrell stressed the power of now. Concrete actions the city is taking to strengthen economic development, advance public safety, and protect and enhance our neighborhoods. I hope you'll enjoy the 2014 State of the City Address. Welcome. Wow, what a group. It's good to see everybody. I'd like to thank the Chamber for providing this opportunity to speak before you today. You know, it's going to be, um, uh, it's only been about 91 days, three months. Can you hear me now? It's only been about 91 days since I took office. And as, as fun as it was to prepare this speech, it just made us realize how much we've accomplished in that time. I have to tell you, you know, I spent 19 years as a prosecutor. So getting in front of a group like this, I had this overwhelming urge to start picking a jury. <laughs> so if I start randomly dismissing people, I've instructed Brian, my chief of staff, to throw a napkin at me. I'm just glad he doesn't carry a taser anymore. Um, there are a few people I'd like to recognize before I get started, and first and foremost, it's our city council. Uh, would you guys uh, please stand? We've got Deputy Mayor Burbage. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Burbage, Council Members Dini Duclos, Susan Honda, Bob Selsky, Kelly Maloney, Martin Moore, and our new Council Member, Lydia Acefa Dawson. We're very excited about her addition to the City Council. I can tell you that, uh, that we've just got such a great council and it's so great to work with. We also have, do we have our two municipal court judges here? Uh, uh, David Larson, and Re I th think I saw Rebecca Robertson. Judge Roberts, are you here? And Thank you very much for your service. You're doing a fa fantastic job heading up our municipal court. We appreciate it. Then we've got my uh, management team, our uh, department directors and managers. Would you please uh, uh, stand up for everybody? We've got a slide here. They help the trains run on time, and they help everything uh, at City Hall run smoothly. So we very much appreciate uh, their effort. This was actually taken in the lead up before we got the great idea to go get the bigger flag, uh, which you'll see in a moment. I'd also like to recognize my chief of staff, probably one of the best decisions I've made since I became mayor. Uh, where is Brian? Brian Wilson? Thank you. He's an indispensable member of the team. And speaking of indispensable, we have a brand new police chief, Andy Wong. Andy, would you? I'm also happy to announce our deputy chief, Kyle Sumter. Thank you, Kyle. Please join me in welcoming our very brand new um, uh, finance director, uh, Ade Ararula. Today's first day uh, with the city was yesterday, and no, I didn't take him out. We usually take people out for lunch, and then no, I didn't take him out to Costco for hot dogs, uh, <laughs> which is my favorite place to go, right, John? Um, uh, Brian and I took him over to the Ram. We got to talk a little bit. They're great. They're really cheap. Um, but Ade is a nationally recognized uh, finance director. In fact, he sits on the national board, the international board of Government Finance Office Association for the United States and Canada. So. Um, well, let's get right down into it. You know, about a week before I took office, uh, many of you, how many people here, sort of like jury service, how many people saw the profile of me that ran in the mirror um, about a week before uh, I took office? You remember that? All right, well, we've got it up here. And for the most part, it was pretty good. There was one line, though, that my wife, who works for the state courts as a PR person, that she drew particular attention to. And it was a line from my uh, when I used to play football at the University of Washington. There was this guy with a thick southern accent. And he always just, I won't imitate the southern accent. But he used to say, go around that corner like your hair is on fire. Well, for one reason or another, I used this quote. And... Um, you know, my wife, Wendy, who read the article, she goes, oh, my God, a mayor cannot have his hair on fire. <laughs> and she's right. I mean, you know, a mayor can do a lot of things. You know, you can't live your life with all the, the, the lessons of football. But what a mayor must do and can do is lead with a sense of urgency and a sense of purpose. 
and a mayor sets the direction and the tone and the vision for the future of our city. And so that's really what I would, what I would highlight. But I can tell you that it does, it does kind of give us an opportunity, because for those who know me know I'm a little bit of an ad man. Remember my, the slogans? Every time I run for office, I've got a slogan on my signs. And I'm a little bit of sort of an amateur um, slogan guy, you know, kind of a, a frustrated madman, if you will. And um, if you will, I would actually really like your, uh, maybe we can kind of do a focus group right here, because I've been thinking along these lines about some really cool slogans we could use for the city. First one, Federal Way, our hair is on fire. <laughs> federal Way, got smolder. And then my favorite, Federal Way, feel the burn. <laughs> so, all right, so maybe these need a little bit of work. Maybe, uh, you know, but most importantly and, and gladly, we've got Kelly Maloney and um, uh, Susan Honda, our Deputy Mayor, Gene Burbage, and Deanie Duclo working on rebranding efforts. And so we're going to be working throughout. So, well, I'll make sure to pass those along. And if uh, you have any feedback on that, just let us know. You know, I sought the office of mayor because I felt that we needed to approach the issues facing this city with a sense of urgency. When I, you know, when we drove in here today, I remember the day actually I actually had doorbells across the street. And sometimes when I, when I drive around neighborhoods, I remember the doors that I knocked on. And for the thousands upon thousands of doors that I knocked on, I remembered people essentially asking, when is it going to happen? When is this vision for Federal Way that's been put out there going to happen? You know, Robert Kennedy, one of my favorite leaders, used to say that the future is not a gift. It is an achievement. And he was right. The future of this city, um, to, uh, in order to match our dreams of a great quality of life, a place that businesses and families dream of moving to, we have to do that now. Federal Way will rise on the power of now. What, the, what does that mean? That means we have to recognize the opportunities in front of us and seize them. Federal Way will be a city in which economic recovery takes full root, will actively recruit new businesses, and will retain existing ones. We will stimulate an economic renaissance in our downtown that transforms the core of our city. We will devote the same energy that we have for economic development in our downtown to preserving the integrity of our neighborhoods. Let me, this is a, a, another important uh, thing to remember, though, in that vision is imperative. But as the Jap Japanese proverb goes, vision without action is a daydream. And folks, we're not going to daydream. We are going to move on the power of now. And we're bringing the power of now to make our vision of reality. For the past 91 days, we have brought this sense of urgency first in reaching out to the people of this community. To know me is to know that I, one of the things that I always talk about, about de democratic government works best when it's a voice for the people. And the first thing that we did, and when I did as, as your mayor, is we started neighborhood connection, literally taking the city hall out to the neighborhoods. We had our first meeting at Brigadoon on the 27th of February. It was a great opportunity. Over 110 residents came and asked questions and had staff people, uh, all the department directors there and new staff. And it was a great opportunity. Our next one is going to be at Adelaide Elementary School on uh, the 24th of this month. We've got some information at the doors. I would love for everyone to be there. It was truly a great thing to see that many people there just to see their, their leaders. We're going to start off on the west part of the city and work our way east. The key thing about that program, though, is that we're going to follow back up with those same, with the, with those same people, the same area, and give them the feedback and the follow through about what's happening in regard to crime and other uh, perhaps distressed properties in their neighborhood. The other next exciting thing that we're doing is for the first time in four years, we have new programming on our Channel 21 something we call New Day Federal Way. And it's hosted by my very own uh, executive assistant, Kathy. Kathy, where are you? Uh, Kathy, would you please stand for everybody? Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> the idea with New Day, New Day Federal Way, in fact, we've got Mike Ziak in the back of the room uh, filming this. This is actually going to be airing for the first time in the city's history. We're going to be airing a State of the City address. At these neighborhood connections, they're going to be, they're airing uh, right now on Channel 21. The MLK celebration is airing on Channel 21. We've got six of those neighborhood connection meetings planned this year. 
And what we're going to be doing is having Kathy do a brief introduction, and then we'll have, so it's not going to be, it's going to be C-SPAN like. There's going to be a brief introduction, some paring down, and then we're going to air it and start sharing with this community what's actually happening inside of it. So that's very exciting. The next program I'd like to talk about is something that, as a council member, um, I had always thought we need to recognize the people in this community who have done so much. And so we instituted, I instituted the uh, mayor's key to the city. And the very first recipient of that key to the city is our very own Pete Von Reichbauer. <laughs> For his unparalleled uh, contributions to this community over the, over the years. And he's been a very dear friend of mine. And, and I was his intern, God, 25 years ago now. It's just crazy how time flies. The second key to the city went to our very own Carrie Rowe, who's gone on now to the city of Kennewick after 23 years of service to this city. And really, what we said on that plaque is that the roads and the infrastructure and parks of this community are his enduring legacy. And he's also, it's very important to note, has turned around the uh, Federway Community Center. We now have 6,000 members that uh, uh, members to the Federway Community Center. And for the first uh, quarter of this year, we are actually operating in the black, meaning it's paying for itself. It's absolutely fantastic. So, uh, and we were sorry to see Carrie go. Finally, we had the very first rallies at City Hall in our history. We had 700 Federal Way football fans uh, that came to uh, the city of Federal Way. And you could see, I thought, God, that's, that, that first flag we had just wasn't big enough. And so through the generous donation of uh, the, our IT department, this flag actually came, was flown in on a plane from the country of Vietnam. Uh, one of the uh, people in IT, their uh, brother lived in Vietnam. And we are, we are convinced and, and told this is the largest, largest 12th man banner south of Seattle. And we just had a tremendous time. I can tell you, though, that the uh, staff found out that it's a lot easier to give me a bullhorn than it is to take it away. <laughs> but so that, that's been a lot of fun. It's been energetic. And we've been reaching out to, oh, we had Norm Johnson there, too. He was a lot of fun. Actually, he didn't know him until about, about 30 seconds before that he was going to get introduced to the public. So that's what happens when you give me a bullhorn. So I, I can tell you that while we've engaged with some energy and we've really reached out to the public, that's just the first piece of this. When I, in the lead up to being sworn in, and uh, immediately upon being sworn in, I knew that the, probably the number one issue facing this council and this community, and the issue that had the potential to possibly splinter our council and the community at large, was the Performing Arts and Conference Center. I think we can all agree, I think everybody in this room agrees, that what we need in our downtown is a game changer, a massive investment in our downtown. But all, on, conversely, we can all agree every one of us, that it has to be done in a responsibly, a fiscally responsibly manner. And so I thought, how do, you, how do you thread that needle? And so one of the things that we did is we have developed what we call the mayor's blue ribbon panel, or the dream team of local financial uh, retail operational experts that are going to bring to bear metrics objective metrics about what is what does it what is it going to take to actually run this facility it's one thing to gather up the one-time money of 32 million dollars but it's the operational as aspect of this that we need to make sure that we've got right and so i am we're truly excited about the expertise it's truly a dream team of people that know what they're doing i wanted people that looked at pro formas for a living and it made those decisions about, you know, really about whether companies fail or succeed and thrive. And that's why we have just been, you know, completely um, uh, thrilled, frankly, with, with the kind of work that they're doing. But it's, you know, I think what all of us have heard about panel this and in a kind of panel, you know, commission here, but it had to lead to action. And one of the things I thought was very important is that we have debated the PAC literally for years. We need to decide this by this summer one way or the other. There is $2 million hanging in the balance about whether we're going to move on this or not. If we don't move, we lose the $10 million. We've already uh, obtained the $5 million for the state for the property. So a decision on this is imperative, and that's why we wanted to move. By May 8th, on May 8th of this year, the City Council is going to sit down with the members of the Blue Ribbon Dream Team or, and the panel and get their findings 
about the operational aspect of this. So watch very closely. Uh, this is also a key month in which we find out about some of the key financial uh, pieces of that puzzle. So I think that the key thing is, is that once we can agree on the metrics and the objective part of this, we can move forward and make a policy decision based on the best available decision uh, that we have. Now that leads us to the town square. Again, our downtown, we own eight acres in our downtown. It just takes us now to, to seize that moment. And what you're seeing right here are designs for the first ever park in the city of Federal Way's downtown. And last night, ladies and gentlemen, I want to report to you that the city council authorized up to $200,000 for our city park, which will be in place by July 4th weekend of this year. It's a first step. Part of what we've been talking about, this is the formerly known as the AMC site. We named it Town Square. But it's not enough just to rename things. There is power in words, but there's greater power in action. And whatever this property, this will be a permanent park, at least on most of this property. What happens with it next is going to be dependent on something else I will talk about in a few moments. But I can tell you, <coughs> We have dreamed and talked about what was going to happen with this property for years, and now by July 4th weekend, it will become a reality. It will finally also answer to the, que answer to the question that people have sort of asked about, sometimes in a very snarky way, where is our downtown? Ladies and gentlemen, that is our downtown. So I, I also have I've talked for years about creating a sense of center. What we need, folks, is a place to drive to, not drive through. And this will provide that. We'll have a sense of center and a real sense of excitement in our downtown. So on the broader economic front, we are surrounded by good news. After weathering the impacts of the Great Recession, this city is on the rebound, and there is a lot to celebrate. Children's Hospital. In fact, I was in this very room hearing from the people with the help of Pete von Reichbauer, who brought us together. Children's Hospital uh, announced the opening of a South Sound Clinic it represents a $15 million investment in this community with 26,000 visits per year to that facility. It's going to go down there by the Costco in the old Circuit City. That is a massive investment, but more importantly, what it is showing is that we are becoming a mecca, a destination for healthcare with places like DaVita and surrounding uh, uh, medical um, uh, uh, medical services. And so that's something that's fu literally fueling our economic engine. But I'd also like to talk about the fact that in our downtown, the commons, as you know, we had the Coles opening. They are investing $27 million in renovation of the commons. I always want to call it the mall, but we'll call it the commons. And um, in addition to Coles, which already opened, and we were there for that, my, my colleagues and I, in addition to that, we've got 50,000 square feet of new retail space at the mall uh, with Dick's Sporting Goods, and that should be open by late September. So it's, um, uh, there's a lot of great news, ladies and gentlemen, and I can tell you that just in the past year, the economic recovery in this, in this area is significant. Total permits issued in 2013 increased 5% over 2012, and 5% uh, uh, over 2012, and 25% over the 2009 low of 2,459 permits. Applications are uh, up across residential and commercial projects, but listen to this fact. In fact, the value of 2013 project applications is a little more than $136 million. Last year, $136 million. That represents a 75% 75 75 increase over that previous year. Federal Way is booming. So when I am and, and here to report to you on the state of Federal Way, I can strongly report to you that the state of our economy is strong and getting better. But we're not going to be satisfied with that because we are operating under the power of now. In that vein, today I am announcing the development and the council approved last night the new position of a full-time economic development director uh, to focus. Thank you. To focus the city's efforts to grow Federal Way's economy. The Economic Development Director will seek new and innovative ways to uh, compete regionally and nationally for new businesses. Now, the budget cuts in 2010, and we all know that we were uh, affected greatly 
we had to combine the economic development department and the community development department. But now, with the recovery in full bloom, it's time to separate those back out. It's also time for the economic development director that we will conduct the national search for to reach out to local businesses and seek their input on the needs of our economy. Many of you in, in this room are going to be reached out to and communicated. We will link arms with our business community to strengthen our economy, forming a business development panel of local experts to provide guidance on business issues. They will be our economic development dream team, or dream team two. I'd like to acknowledge the outstanding job that Patrick Doherty has done as our uh, community and economic development director. I said this last night, Patrick has actually been charged with three jobs. He had community <laughs> development, he had economic development, and he had the Performing Arts and Conference Center, and he's just done a phenomenal job. He is going to retain his role as uh, shepherding the Performing Arts and Conference Center, which is a massive project, and all the details that we've been working on for years. But we are revamping and re looking at a re-energized community development program in which, in fact, the, uh, the, uh, uh, he told us last night and we've known that the input or the revenue is a million dollars over budget from last year. And that's why he is going to head up solely community development. And we'll talk about something else that we're doing in there in regard to the neighborhoods. But I'd also like to thank Patrick for his work. Several years ago, he implemented 40 different measures to streamline the permit process in this community. He also shepherded and helped the uh, arrival of Davida, Kiwit, the Ram, um, and Coles, and a number of other things. He also, in regard to tourism, led the effort to create the 2012 Olympic Team Dive Trials that was seen worldwide. And so I'd, for that, Patrick, I'd like to thank you for all your work over the years. But now let's talk about the power of now in regard to public safety, which is our city's number one priority. In the fir very first week, it was kind of nice to get started this way, in the very first week on the job, we were able to obtain 2,100 square feet of free retail, or not retail, but free um, office space for our new substation downtown. And the substation will be highly visible. It's directly across, it's the old um, uh, John L. Scott building. And it's right on the corner, and we're going to have a grand opening. There it is right there. We're going to have signage. There'll be a grand opening. It's a much more improved opportunity for the police. Literally, it's going to be like a, a sub-precinct where the officers can come and go, be much more visible. And as we develop our downtown, we're going to have much more of a robust presence. They can go there to interview folks, do their reports, et cetera. But it's going to send a message out to everybody in this community. The Federal Way Police Department is here, and they're working for you. And we've made impressive strides in making our downtown uh, core safe since uh, 2010. We implemented the Special Operations Unit, which was instrumental in reducing crime. Um, when with business activity increasing downtown, we know that we have to be proactive and stay ahead of the criminals. That's why bringing this new substation online is absolutely critical. I'd like to take this opportunity to personally thank Pat Rhodes, who owns that building, who providing this opportunity rent-free. And as my brother Phil likes to say, free is better than cheap. So, and he's pretty cheap. Uh, the, downtown, the downtown substation sends a strong message that Federal Way is open for business and not crime. My favorite writer, W. Somerset Mom, famously once observed that money is like a sixth sense. Without it, you can't really enjoy the other five. And public safety really is the sixth sense of quality of life. Without it, you truly cannot enjoy the other elements of our community, parks, neighborhoods, shopping, schools, you name it. Everything is tied into that sense of security and public safety. There is no greater responsibility for the city than providing for the safety of our citizens. Our commitment to public safety is unwavering and unceasing. But I've got something kind of fun and exciting to announce as well. Accompanying our efforts in regard to public safety, uh, we'll be changing the look of our police vehicles. It's not enough just to do certain things. We are moving to black and white vehicles. Much more visible, much more leaning forward. These new vehicles will send a message that we have got a progressive, very, very vigorous approach to law enforcement and a new approach. It underscores the entire new uh, feel of our police department. Now, we're not going to go and replace these all at once. We order 12 vehicles per year, so you'll start seeing these on the street in June. They're already in the process. 12 new vehicles this year, and then over time, it'll take about three or four years, 
um, and we'll have a whole new fleet of black and white vehicles. So I'd like to talk to you about another uh, law enforcement thing that in conversations with uh, the chief before I became the chief of staff is, you know, having spent the last two and a half years in the car theft unit at the prosecutor's office, I wanted to make sure that we brought the best technology available, and that's what the ALPR. We are tripling the department's capacity of our high-tech license plate readers to locate and recover stolen vehicles. These automated license plate readers, or ALPRs, scan vehicle license plates and search for matches with vehicles that have been reported and already are in a database. An officer manually, this is, listen to this, an officer manually checking that every car has a computer in it and the officer types in the plate as they see it. it a, a police officer can normally get or recover three to four stolen vehicles per year. In one of, using one of these devices, that number becomes 50 to 75 stolen vehicles. Now let me tell you, I did this work for a long time. I, uh, many people are in prison right now because of the efforts that we did at the King County Prosecutor's Office to reduce car theft in King County. Word will go out in the car theft community. If you are driving a stolen vehicle or if, if you're thinking of doing it, don't even bother coming to Federal Way because it's on. And that's what this will do. This will make sure that we significantly drop the number of stolen vehicles uh, in Federal Way. Now, you know, a lot of people, and this is the way it used to be, I'd say five, six, seven years ago, before Norm really, Norm Mailing, uh, one of my mentors, really addressed car theft. But if you think about it, the theft of an automobile is a devastating event to a family. It literally leaves families stranded. And we will address this crime, and we will reduce those numbers. Because it's not just numbers, folks. It's real folk, real people. Now, in regard to the police staffing, I'd like to thank the exceptional professionalism of the men and women of our police force. My commitment as your mayor is to work to make the community even safer. The most recent, I want to tell you where we're at with crime statistics, last year's overall crime reduction was 1% in 2013 compared to the previous year. Residential burglary dropped 22%, a 4% decline in auto theft. We get a few of these ALPRs, you guys, and it's going to drop down significantly. And a 13% reduction in aggravated felony assault. The city's paramount duty is to protect our community and keep our citizens safe. We'll never be satisfied with simple statistics where every, every crime affects a real person. But the number one area that we can truly address quality of life, because car theft, residential burglary, what are we talking about? We are talking about quality of life. And what we need to do and what I'm going to be proposing in the 2015 and 2016 budget is to increase the number of police officers by between four and six for the next biennium. And we'll be talking with the council. We're going to go through that. But this will have, enable us to have a much greater impact on the day-to-day -day operational ability. We're going to put those folks in uniforms and put them in special operations unit and put them in pro-act units to prevent crime before it actually happens. Very exciting stuff. This one step alone, by bringing more outstanding officers to police, uh, to the Federal Way Police Force, uh, to work for you, will enhance our safety and the safety of your businesses and uh, customers. But now let's move along to, remember I talked about the revamping of community development. I can tell you after knocking on thousands and thousands of doors, I've seen a difference. When I first started knocking on doors in 2002, and just recently I obviously stopped knocking on doors sometime in late October, and I was really concerned with what I saw. There are neighborhoods that are slipping, and once neighborhoods slip, it's very difficult to recapture that. Neighborhoods are the backbone of this community. And this office, I and my staff and all of us at City Hall are committed to making sure that we do everything we can to stop that. In our code enforcement, and what I'm really talking about is code enforcement. In, in our code enforcement, we have had a, a, um, a way of doing things that's been complaint driven. Now the problem with being complaint driven is it pits neighbor versus neighbor. It also puts us in the perspective of not having an inventory of where the distressed or problem properties are, and they're out there. But by relying on neighbor to report on neighbor, we don't have that idea. What we need is a systematic approach to address this. And this represents, actually, just in the past four years, five years, the number of complaints that we have had coming in. And what does that tell you? That tells you a couple of things. Number one, people know that we're working and they're reporting into us but it tells you that the neighborhoods are starting to slip and we will not let the neighborhoods fail. And that's why last night, again, last night was a big night on our council. 
the council approved an additional position for code enforcement to raise that number of code enforcement officers from two to three. Because what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is steer away from a complaint-driven system to a city-driven system. And we will find out where those distressed properties are and we'll address them. Now, I think all of us would know that there are many issues that, that may um, uh, you know, necessitate uh, involvement. And that's why there are issues you know, such as age or health or finances. And one of the things we're going to do is, you know, we're not going to come down hard on those folks. We're going to uh, really uh, get the homeowners associations involved and try to figure out what's going on at those particular properties. And then sort of ratchet our response up. If we've got willful violators, and I should say this, we're not talking about people who are, we're not going to be the HOA for the, for the city. We're not talking about people who aren't mowing their yard or let it get a little too long. We're talking about actual junk in people's yard. We're talking about flagrant violations of city code that are literally driving down the value of people's properties. That's not going to be tolerated. And we're going to go back. And the key is follow through. And that's why we are completely retailoring our community development and our code enforcement and that's why Patrick is absolutely essential to have in the position the newly revamped position of code enforcement I've got some really exciting news ladies and gentlemen and remember at the very very beginning uh, my very first City Council meeting I talked about the history of this community I'm, I'm kind of a, a, a real big history buff to, to know me is to know that I'm a I read uh, almost nothing but history and I uh, Pete knows that we were just talking about that yesterday and, and um, there's probably no greater property in Federal Way for the historical significance than Brook Lake. Now remember in, the, in my opening speech, uh, right after I got sworn in, we were, we were talking about how this community really coalesced from Star Lake, from Brook Lake, Redondo. Redondo, as you know, started as Stone's Landing and then turned into uh, uh, Redondo uh, around the turn of the century. And um, they coalesced gradually into the in, into communities. Well, this property right here sits um, at the corner of 356 and 99. And for decades, literally decades, there have been concerted efforts to get this property into the city's um, uh, ownership. You know, Gene Burbage and Jim Burbage were very involved. Pete Von Reichbauer for years and years was a key figure in making sure that we assembled uh, that property and, and the, uh, the Marks family uh, with the original donation of the 120 acres of the West High Elvis. In fact, I just took my, um, on a really, really rainy day, uh, Benjamin, my, my son Benjamin, and my wife Wendy and I went out with umbrellas and we walked out uh, all the way out to the lookout point. And I, I, sh I showed Benjamin, I said, see that building over there? And we were looking on the other side. That building was built in 1929. It was called the Wheelhouse Restaurant and in. And over the years it turned into a couple different things like a speakeasy, a brothel, a couple of different things. It was uniquely placed but it has a very special place in the history of this community because the Brook Lake Community Center was the site of our very first library in this community. And so during the transition Jerry Knutson came and I had uh, office space that that uh, was donated and, and uh, Jerry Knutson of the Historical Society came and said you guys really need to move on this property. The people that are involved in the Brook Lake Community Center are, are getting a little bit older, and, and we just need to do this now. And this is what we're talking about in regard to the power of now. And so immediately within my first two weeks of taking office, I reached out to Wendell Keeker, a, a very historic figure in his own right. He's been here probably back since the, uh, the days of Dick Balch when he was on, uh, on, on Pack Highway. Wendell Keeker has had a business in this community for nearly 50 years, and he's a dear friend of mine. And I, I called him up and I said, Wendell, well, I'd like to have you come in. I'd really like to talk to you about the Brook Lake property. We had Jerry Knutson come in. And, and you know how things take a really long time with real estate and, and anytime you try to do anything. So we had Wendell, um, Jerry Knutson, myself, and Kerry Rowe. And uh, finally, we were having a great meeting, and, and we had Kerry Rowe, and, and uh, finally Kerry, you know, knowing kind of sensed the moment, kind of called for the question and said, well, and, and Wendell was sort of the last person standing in regard to the Brook Lake Community Center that actually owned this property. And uh, uh, Kerry finally called the question and said, hey, uh, so what's your time frame? What are you thinking? And it was about 2.20 at the time. And there's a, there's a clock above my door in my office. And Wendell looked up at the clock and he goes, can you have me out of here by 3? 
and and that's the power of now, ladies and gentlemen. I, I grabbed our city attorney and I got in there and like let's let's cut this deal now. I can report to you uh, this property now belongs to the city of Federal Way. In fact, this picture taken of a local group called the Hill, um, um, the Brook Lake Hillbillies, a, a group that was very prominent back then. They used to have a, a function every year at this site. And the book that symbolizes the history of our community is taken at that property. Very exciting. So when myself and, and uh, Chris Carroll and Carrie Rowe, we went out to the site. And um, uh, the person who's the caretaker now, his name is Billy, uh, and, and Wendell was there as well. They said, you need to go up to the second floor and look at a picture. And that picture, could we go back, Chris, that, that picture? This picture was on the second floor. It had been sitting there. When, when Billy said to take it off the wall, we took it off and there was like a, you could tell it had been there literally for decades because there was a remnant ar around it. And then Billy said, turn it around. And we turned around and written in handwriting, who knows by whom or who knows when, said in cursive where Federal Way began. And it listed all of the people, names that had been long since forgotten, people that were water commissioners. This was the first source of water for Federal Way, the first library <coughs> for the city of Federal Way, it, you know, the first water district for the city of Federal Way. And now it's ours. And so I have to tell you, it's, it's very exciting. And I, um, you know, we think about as we move through, you know, today's activity is tomorrow's history. And truly, that's, that's what's fun about this is to, to merge it all uh, up together. So um, what I'd like to do is actually, Wendell told me about something that was, he, when, he, when we were talking about, this is Wendell and Pete and myself uh, just last week at the site. And... Uh, in fact, five minutes after I got done meeting with Wendell, Pete's on the line. He says, all right, what's going on with Brook Lake? And, uh, and uh, we talked, and we, you know, Pete has been involved for years and years on this property. And it's altogether fitting that Pete is here for this and involved in this. And um, I have in, uh, we want to make sure that, that uh, um, Wendell uh, was involved in this. And we went out there. And on that very day, uh, Wendell said, hey, there is something behind the walls at the Brook Lake Community Center that you need to get. And I said, well, what's that? And he said, there is a historic painting that has been boarded up behind the walls literally for decades. And nobody has seen it. In fact, Wendell uh, you know, had a vague recollection of what it was, but he could, it had been locked away and stored away for so many years, he didn't even know exactly what it depicted. But he said, you've got to get this picture. It has major historical significance. So ladies and gentlemen, to my left is what we pulled <laughs> out of the history. We went there that very day. I told our uh, interim parks uh, director, uh, Ken Miller, I said, I want you. On that day we were having that picture, I got back to City Hall and uh, Pete and I talked about it and we said, we better go get that now. And we went and it was sawed out. It was literally behind boards. This picture has not been seen in public for literally decades. And I, as soon as I found out about this and they brought it over to City Hall, uh, I said, I've got to show this next Wednesday. So for you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have uh, Jean, our deputy mayor, could you come up and maybe we can uh, get this over. And I'm going to have our very own Pete von Reichbauer unveil this for you. We're going to kind of edge it up a little bit closer. And then uh, when we're all done, I would invite each and every one of you to come up and take a closer look. After we unveil this, I've just had some closing comments. It's taped there on the side, The bottom of it says 1944, which was when it was painted, but it depicts a sound called the Puget Sound Basin. And when you come up to it, 
look to the left and the right because uh, written uh, in, the, in a vertical fashion are the numbers 1890. This depicts what Federal Way looked like 100 years ago, 130 years ago, or 120 years ago. Um, and remember, if you will, that the big trees that came out of this area were massive, 15 feet in diameter or greater. It was original growth. That's what we, the Barker Cabin used to set up on 312 at, a, and, at about where First Avenue is. That's, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is a true piece of Federal Way history and now it belongs to us. In closing, I'd like to say as we blaze a path to the future, it's vital that we look back on our history as a guidepost. In doing so, you'll see that our, that our past is rich and our future is on the rise. The small communities that began at Brook Lake, the Harding School, Star Lake, Stones Landing, and then turning into Redondo, have coalesced and grown into the 10th largest city in the state. And today, we're moving Federal Way to new heights. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I mean, <laughs> sorry. Old habits die hard. Ladies and gentlemen, beyond a reasonable doubt, the state of our city is strong. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching the State of the City Address. If you have questions or would like to know more, please contact the Mayor's Office. And we hope you'll join us next time on New Day Federal Way.